gosh, thanks for doing this. This is awesome. Yeah, this is so cool. I was looking at stuff. There's a lot of activity happening here in Alaska. So yeah. I belong, I joined a girl. I just got busy. I joined a UFO page. I joined several remote viewing classes. I joined a group for psychics and mediums and things are just happening. All kinds of paranormal stuff. Are you cool to get started with talking mm -hmm. about our close mm -hmm. encounter? Yes. I uh, was in Anchorage, Alaska and I remember how old I was but I was maybe nine years old between seven and nine years old yeah and we didn't live from where far from where we're living right now um and so what happened it, I mean to this day I still would love to remember love to know what happened in between the space of time that I saw them and I woke up in the morning but the deal is I was going to bed I was in my bed and I decided to look out the window. And when I looked out the window, I saw three forms. I saw two like string bean looking characters. And then I saw one that looked like it was a ghost, you know, but it wasn't like a ghost ghost. It was like the cartoon character version of a ghost that looked like it had a sheet over its head with two eyes. And I thought I was, I was freaked out. So I just kept, you know, I was just looking at him and then I got back in the bed and I put the covers over my head and I was like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, what is that? And then I fell asleep that way. When I woke up in the morning, they were all standing next to my bed and they said, don't be afraid. And that's all I remember. I must have passed out or something, but, you know, it was creepy. And um, as I have listened to many stories of other contactees, they have all, or not all of them, but many of them have expressed a similar experience, these same kind of creatures. And there's always, they're either in pairs or there's three, there's at least three or four of them, you know? So I'm like, oh my God, that's exactly what happened to me. That's exactly what I saw. But it wasn't, uh, it wasn't, it was, I did, I mean, I was young. So what I would have experienced was something that a young person would have experienced fear. You know, what is that? Oh my God, it's scary. I wasn't thinking aliens for that's for sure. But since the future, I've heard all these similar stories and I'm like, oh my God, that's exactly what I, I saw, you know? So I'm either, I'm not ready to be reminded or I have been reminded. And I've just been like what I do with my sound healing work and all the other work that I do, plus my desire to be a part of the galactic community, you know, and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah. So, so it's not a long story. Yeah, that was it. And then I've just been working to get, you know, to have a memory of the experience between when I saw them and when I woke up, like it was wiped from my, my memory. And I know that now because that's what they do, you know? So do you, um, uh the the figures that looked ghostly did it look mm -hmm. white i'm just curious oh they were all white they, they were, were all, all white, white. Okay. they were all white yeah yeah um and and again in my eye that's what they looked like then but maybe now yeah maybe i might notice some different variations of color but everybody that i've heard they all say the same there were these white figures or whatever and i'm like wow and, or they'll say they look like the grays or something like that mm -hmm. but there's two of them and one of these and three yeah. of these or whatever and I'm just like okay so you know I'm not I didn't imagine that that happened you know yeah that really happened do you think that like do you think about this often or do you feel like it has influenced the path that you've taken in life I'm pretty sure it has now I'm pretty sure it has influenced the path that I've taken in life but in the back of my mind, I feel like I'm in a space of continual, like, I don't need to feel like obsessed to want to figure it out now. Now I just feel like, you know what, I'm, I'm in constant communion. I channel, I do this work. So I know that I'm in constant communication and I'm, whatever they told me, I'm on the path of doing that thing, that work that they gave me to do. So so I feel, I feel somewhat settled in that. Like every now and then I do think about it. Sometimes I even forget that it even happened until I hear that. And I'm like, oh yeah, that's right. You know? Yeah. And at one time, like 
I'd say 10 years ago, I was going, oh my God, I need to, I need to remember, I need to remember. But then I realized I'm giving too much energy to it, you know, just because, you know, I could do a hypnosis or something like that. But I think the idea is for it to unfold, to, to rest in the knowledge that it, yes, it happened. Yes. Communication was given. Maybe other things were given. Like there's, there's always been this lump on the back of my neck. And I don't know what it is, but it doesn't feel like it belongs there. Other people, whenever I would go to get my hair done, they would say, oh, what is that knot on the back of your neck? What, I mean, this from years and years and years ago. So maybe that's an implant. I don't know. Um, but I'm not worried about it. <laughs> you know, I don't, I'm not worried. Well, about, I'm alive. I'm, I'm healed. I'm whole. I'm, I'm healthy. So I don't, I don't to put too much energy into worrying about yeah. that stuff. You know, I feel like, um, I do have some kind of communication, but I also feel like I I know I've expressed, I think I've expressed an interest that I want to work for the Galactic Federation. I want to be a part of whatever is going on on earth and in other places. I don't right now don't know how to get into that. I don't know where to start. So I've started locally um, addressing police and law enforcement um, hey, uh, do you need psychic mediums? Do you need people for paranormal investigations and stuff like that? Because I've accepted the call, I feel like I will end up on that road if I follow my guidance and intuition. I'll get to the places, and and there are key. It, all those gifts don't just unfold. There are key moments or encounters that happen, and then all of a sudden it's like you you hit a switch inside your body. And things that were there become activated. So gifts that you've had all along, you know, you can use them up to a certain point, you know, and then all of a sudden you meet Crystal and then Crystal says, uba, uba, uba. And the next, thing you know, you're also yeah. doing telekinesis, you know, because yeah. she turned, she activated, she was the, the like we're, we're activators yeah, to each other. We're activators to each other for I sure. I believe, I do believe that, um, that my encounter was, I was given a mission. I, mm -hmm. I believe that a hundred percent. And, um, and I did try hypnosis mm -hmm. and, um, and I, I'm going to say that your intuition is correct. Cause because mm -hmm. what I was told in my hypnosis is that I already know the answers. I need to mm -hmm. trust myself. Mm -hmm. And so all of these things are, are innate in inside of me. Mm -hmm. And, um, I, I think that we get upgrades every mm -hmm. once in a while that's yeah. kind of what I think is this real aligned mm -hmm. with what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. um, we we get upgrades and then we also get downloads of of new mm -hmm. information because yes. I've been told that timelines have shifted and we that, were just talking about that. Yeah, oh, and yes. so uh -huh. so that's why my call mm -hmm. to record you mm -hmm. and others. Mm -hmm. There's other mm -hmm. people that I'm talking to. Mm -hmm. um, they're all aligned on their mission, but mm -hmm. I believe that the pool bringing us all together in this way and in mm -hmm. um, this format where we can share it with other people. Um, I'm being told that broadcasting the information on YouTube or however we want to get it out is really mm -hmm. important because yeah then it calls in, it, we all connect. We need mm -hmm. to connect now. This is the time when mm -hmm. we need to come together and and each do the parts of our mm -hmm. mission because we're all like little puzzle pieces for each yeah. other. Yeah, and, and that's other. what I've seen. That's what I've seen. Yeah. I was doing, so I did a vocal alchemy class um, and I'll be doing a vocal alchemy class once every second Tuesday of the month. But on Sunday, I did a little class and I did a talk uh, with this, Adam Center here in town. And one of the women said, yes, the timeline has shifted and we've, we've, we've all accepted to go to be here on this particular timeline. Mm -hmm. But when she said that it was an activation for me, I've been just thinking about it because when, when the pandemic started, uh, I was sitting in my room and I was feeling some kind of way. I don't remember, but I was overcome by this feeling of this joy and this lightness and this feeling of just beautiful energy and it was saying hey do not for one moment allow yourself to be synced into that fear there's an energy of fear and doubt and devastation and if you allow yourself to go into that you will you will you will see yourself living in that in that way 
you should be happy and joyful. Talk about healing and health and wholeness. See the positive, see the upside. You know, when people talk to you about life, talk about your business and how it's doing great. Talk about how you see yourself in the future, wealth, money, love, happiness, joy, because that life is going to continue going on. And anybody who's talking about the end of the world, you get away from them because it's the end of their world, not yours, you know. And there's a whole mass of us who are shifting into a consciousness and reality of here and those of us who are going in the complete opposite direction. And so when she said that, it reminded me of what she, that what they told me at that time. And then I was like, wait a minute, I'm constantly choosing timelines. You know, it just all of a sudden it became super real to me that my decisions aren't just, they're important, but now they become even more so important because every time I choose, I shift. Mm -hmm. every time we make a choice in this moment and these days we're shifting that's how that's how it's ha how fast it's happening now every decision I make to do the right thing or for me is a shift into the reality that I want to be in mm -hmm. you know and so I have to constantly be focusing on what I want and not what I don't want otherwise poof I find myself over there so the revelation of that is so um, it's just, it just fills me with a lot of good feeling, you know, knowing that nothing is as it seems. Yeah. Everybody's talking about some things, but nothing is as it seems. And, and you're kind of walking in this world of like, you're walking in between worlds, you know, you get to be, you know, I don't know, I can't explain it, but I think you know what I'm saying. So, yeah. I know. Yeah. I, I've, explained it as I feel like I have one mm -hmm. foot on one side and one mm -hmm. foot on the other side, mm -hmm. like I'm mm -hmm. straddling, um, mm -hmm. or bridging two yeah. worlds because, yeah. um, because I know that I'm a conduit, I'm a connector mm -hmm. and, um, and I connect through water, you mm -hmm. know, and crystals, yeah. and any form of water. Yeah. I love um, water. Yeah. One of the, yeah. Crystals and, and water and sound. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sound is a big deal. And I think, mm -hmm. um, you know, I probably connect through water. I think you connect through sound mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so viscerally. Mm -hmm. And, um, uh, and I think that that's how you're broadcasting. Do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? How mm -hmm. you're, that's yeah. part of your mission. Yeah. I think yeah. it's really beautiful. Yeah. Well, the, the alchemy class I'm teaching, um, the, this class that I'm doing now is so it feels so good because everybody there is on key they're on point they I mean I've never been in a class where everybody was like so ready and they're, they're experiencing it like I I just remember that I have had to spend so much time just trying to get I'm talking to them I'm like okay this is how it goes and they're just kind of like I don't know. I, uh, okay. Yeah. Kind of they're funny, like me. I, no sound will come out. I can't even like, <laughs> yeah, they're like, they're like, yeah. Okay. Well, mm, I can feel their energy though. Like they might even be expressing something about it, but I can feel that they're like, yeah. Okay. You know, this was fun, but these, this particular group, these are my warriors. These are the people that I'm training to go into the, to the future. You know, like we're taught, I mean, I was activated to talk about all the things that we can do with our vocal alchemy, but in doing so, I was like, oh my God, um, we actually quite might do it. So we did energy manipulation in the class with our voices. And these people did not bat an eye. They were like, yep, let's do this. I said, let's do it. They were like, all right. And they did it. That's awesome. And it was not like rocket science. And I was like, wow, but they are advanced metaphysician type people there are people who they go to the atom center they've been listening to people talking about this stuff for years they're so very they were open. ready they're very open they were yeah. ready to to receive this information i feel i feel like i'm i'm in the right place doing the right things and stuff and so it's slower than i want it to be but it's happening you know yeah so yeah and i think um like this this um episode in the season that mm -hmm. that I'm producing right now mm -hmm. I'm calling it finding the way mm -hmm. and I feel like that you are exactly where you should be because we're all right now finding the way mm -hmm. you know we're finding the way to where the new way will be because mm -hmm. the old way wasn't working so yeah. now we're finding our way and um yeah and I think that 
I think through creative expression is, is a really good way to find the way, you know, yeah. um, uh, my very last question that I have is, um, have you ever made a piece of art or something that represented your encounter? Um, I've made several. Uh -huh. <laughs> I've made several and I continue to make them. They show up, they just show up in my work. So the one fear, the one uh, about the fear um, that I just recently did with the sequins, uh, absence of fear, that's what it's called. And the two beings, the two beings of light and they're helping receive relief of the absence of fear and then I did a energy painting years ago that I sold at a market and it was called beings of light and it was interesting because it at first glance it looks like just some paint stripped up and down on a paper but as soon as I looked at it I said oh my god these are beings of light yeah and there was a shaman woman at the market and she said I want that you know she she bought that, it um that's I mean I'm I'm a little uh mm -hmm. I, I'm loving that mm -hmm. because I also um, call them beings of light. And mm -hmm. I didn't even, you know, mm -hmm. like, that's just what in my mind, um, I always had the question of like, what is, what is this light? What was uh -huh. that light that I saw? Because it wasn't yeah. like any other light I had seen. Uh -huh. And so, um, and then when I went to Altai and we were opening a portal, um, the, the beings that we were working mm -hmm. with, that we mm -hmm. were referred to by the shaman mm -hmm. as the illuminated beings. Mm -hmm. And that was very aligned for me because it felt like the same beings. Yes. And so I think that that, I think the light, and when people say like you're guided by the light or something, mm -hmm. I believe that that is, yeah. you know. Um, be the light. They say, they're always telling me to be the light, be, be the, light, the light, yeah. be the light. So I'm like, okay. Yeah. And what that means is just be the light, you know? Yeah. And I'm just like, okay, okay. <laughs> it's not always so easy, but <laughs> I know, right. It's simple. It's I've, I've gotten the message of simple many times. Mm -hmm. um, and I have some others like um, that I did their healing paintings. And they're not, I, I believe this, you know, I believe this, this healing work was given to me by them. So I do that. I have a language that I write in. Um, I'm just looking at some of these. And so the language is part of that, mm -hmm. a, a part of the messages from them. Um, I think the visuals are part of this. I, mm -hmm. I think that art and um, song and dance and all of that is a part yeah. of this. And I'm just trying to, um, you know, one by one, fill, fill in yeah. the gaps and, and hopefully these things will inspire other people to, um, to either, uh, you know, cause you, like you mentioned everybody, there's so many people that fight it, mm -hmm. you know, and I think there's mm -hmm. a lot of people who have right. innate abilities mm -hmm. in whatever it is, but they, it doesn't fit the mold of what they were right. maybe born into in this realm. Right. You know? And so they freak out. They're like, mm -hmm. oh my God, I know a lot of people struggle, but only, and I, I don't want to say only in America, but I, I feel like uh, tribal people, Aboriginal people, hold on, I'm trying to, there you are. Okay. Uh, of different cultures and, and all over the world, they, um, they knew about this stuff. They understood yeah. it. And so when it happened to people, the people could say, hey, yo, I know I wasn't one of the people that got contacted, but homeboy down there in the streets or in the jungle, he did. So mm -hmm. <laughs> send Kunta Kinte on down to the shaman up here so yeah. he could get treated because, you know, they didn't, there wasn't, I don't think there was a lot of tolerance for, you know, allowing people to just run around being crazy. They were like, right. oh no, he's not crazy. He sees the spirits. So send them to this place. And then they interacted with these people as people who see the spirits, people yeah. who know stuff. They had great power. They had great magic. They just needed someone to help them to understand it. But here, what we do is we scare the crap out of people. And we say, if you hear voices, you need to go get some electroshock and you need to take medicine. You need yeah. to go to the insane asylum where they're going to pretty much treat you like an animal and you're going to have to stay in a bed and be strapped to it and eat pills all day. And we're going to study you. We're mm -hmm. going to try to figure you out. We're right. going to, you know, and, we're, we're going to use you as our guinea pig because- And then you're ostracized by the society. Yeah. And I've been really, I've been guided to document these stories. And 
I'm just going to keep doing it. And I don't know where it's going, but it's helping me find the way. Mm. And I hope that it helps other people find the way as well. So I really am grateful that you, you know, are sharing your story and, um, and I think it's, it's helping you find the way too, you know, when you put out there what, what it is. And um, yeah, so I think this is a shift in the right direction. Yeah, I feel like right now, it's a big shift in the world of uh, the way we live. And we're all experiencing this shift in a different way. You know, we're, oh, hold on. we're all experiencing this shift in a different way. Um, I feel uh, that the world is kind of at a standstill. On one hand, we are like, it's almost a kind of cognitive dif- dissonance where well, we know like, something you know, is going on, but we just you, figure if we ignore it, we won't, we won't bo- be bothered by it. But yeah. at the same time, it's like, no, you need to pay attention like to, so that you could be in the right timeline. If you're not in the right timeline, you know, so you can't freeze yourself and go, I'm just going to stand here and hope nothing happens. No, you have to make a decision. And I think there's people either here or there, and those are very few people. And there's a wide expanse of people who are just kind of going, if I just stand here, uh, I won't notice, you know, uh, they won't notice me or or nothing's going to happen. And then that's the weird, that's where all the crazy people are going to, that's the end of the world, Armageddon. Well, I think I really feel like we're on like a precipice, you know, Uh like, like maybe a tipping point or Mm -hmm. that part right before you're either falling this way or Mm -hmm. back this way, Mm -hmm. but it's that, that little balance of that, of that, um, I don't know, like just pendulum swing or yeah, it's, but it's that, it's that pause, you know, and, and, and I think this is when we have the opportunity to choose our path, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. whether we're going this way or this way. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I just know I'm going to keep going towards the light and towards Mm -hmm. what is exciting me because that makes me feel good. Mm -hmm. And it makes me feel like I'm making a difference Mm -hmm. and I'm helping people. And so, um, I think all of us that are on a mission are, Mm -hmm. are really aligned in kind of the same direction. We might be going in you know, different ways yeah, about it, but yeah. it's all the same. Well, the other thing is hard for people. The thing that causes people not to choose is the idea that there are people in their immediate circle of family and friends that are not choosing with them. Yeah. That can be extremely devastating. Like if you're not super close to your parents, then it's not, or you're like, well, but if you are, it's heartbreaking yeah. because you can't, you feel like it's this, this ecstasy feeling where you're being led off into this light and you would love for them to go with you, but, but they, they don't even see it. They don't even see it, you know? So you just sound like somebody who's losing their mind, right? Totally, exactly. And then <laughs> there's the, their friends who are just kind of falling away because they're like, I don't know what they're into. And it's not, it's not like, I'm just, you have to do this. No, it's like, you just rise, you live the life you're living, you're, you're going about your business and it's, it's the opposite of be like when you're a Christian and you want to proselytize everybody. It's the complete opposite of that. Cause then this way you just float towards the light. You just continue to live, do the best you can. And then you look back and you say, but they're not coming. And you also know at the same time, it has to be their choice. Well, I know from personal experience that when I feel something really strongly mm-hmm. that I should or shouldn't do something, mm-hmm. just whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And when I don't listen to myself and I go against it, Mm -hmm. there's always massive repercussions Mm -hmm. and and it isn't even so much like one thing. It'll be a bunch of things that'll Mm -hmm. almost come at me like a, like an artillery, like, Hey, Mm -hmm. Hey, Hey, that's the wrong choice. Don't do that. Don't do that. You know? So, (laughs) and then I, I know I've had to like really stop then Mm -hmm. and be like, okay, I just made the wrong decision. Mm -hmm. I know it because I know, like, Mm -hmm. I know inside myself, I made the wrong decision. How do I go now back on track? And and I do believe that we can all get back on track. Mm -hmm. I I, I do. I have that belief Mm -hmm. in my, in, Mm -hmm. in me. You just have to keep making a choice. You can't get caught up in the, oh my God, I didn't do it now. What I lost. Oh, I've lost everything. You got to be like, okay, wait, I got to get back on this road. And maybe it may take you some steps to kind of catch up. Exactly. At least you can't stay, you know, back there, you know. Tamara, thank you so much for doing this and uh, keep on shining. Yes, keep on shining.
Yeah. <laughs> Thank All you. Right. All right. Bye. Bye.